all right so the next topic in a series is the ancova model so these are the regression models which contain a combination of quantitative as well as qualitative independent variables and as we have been stressing on the fact that dummy variables are the qualitative variables because they fall in the category of nominal and the quantitative variables are the variables which we with which we have been dealing since always so variables like income age weight etc so the quantitative independent variables in ancova model have other names as well we call them as covariates or control variables so these are two two different ways of calling the independent variables when they appear along with the qualitative variables so consider that this is your regression model yi equals to beta 1 plus beta 2 d2i plus beta 3 xi plus ui here you can see d2i is your qualitative variable the dummy variable and xi the independent variable is the quantitative variable now consider that this is a regression output as you can see so given 22 individuals yi hat is equal to 1506.244 minus 228.9868 di plus 0.0589 xi these are the standard errors 188. Uh, 0096, 107.0582, 0061. Then R square is given as 0.9284, uh, where the dependent variable y is expenditure on food in dollars. Di or dummy variable takes a value one if females and zero if males. Xi is your after tax income. So part one of this question is uh, interpret the coefficients. So coming about the beta one, which is your intercept coefficient. So intercept coefficient is nothing but the recipient of base category. So y i hat will be equal to this only when d i equals to zero and x i equals to zero. Agreed. So interpretation becomes one five zero six point two four four is. So basically, uh, one five zero six point two four four dollars. is the average expenditure on food of males because di equals to 0 when males of males when when after tax income is 0 i'll repeat the average expenditure on food of males when after tax income is 0 is 1506.244 dollars so that's the inter Expectation of your intercept term. Next, we come on to these coefficients. In the earlier lecture, I think in the very first lecture, I had mistakenly called this particular coefficient as the slope coefficient, the the differential slope coefficient. We actually call them as the differential intercept coefficient. In the very first video, I had made that mistake. So please do not make this mistake of calling the coefficient of dummy variable as the differential slope coefficient we call it differential intercept coefficient because this actually shows us the difference between the intercept term and the term in receiving the value of di1 so interpreting this coefficient now this means the average food expenditure of males oh sorry of females will be lower than that of males by 228.9868 dollars for a given after tax income in other words i'm saying keeping xi or the after tax income constant the average food expenditure of females will be Lower than that of males by two twenty eight point nine eight six eight dollars. Fine. So this was the interpretation of my differential intercept coefficient beta two. So we're done with beta one. Beta two is also done. Let's come on to beta three. This is simple slope coefficient you have been interpreting so far. So the interpretation is the slope coefficient beta three represents. the change in average food expenditure for one unit change in after tax income simple so this refers to the change in average food expenditure for a dollar change in 
the after tax income so can i say that if after tax income increases by $1 then the average food expenditure increases by increases by because this is positive increases by $0.0589 such that the other independent variables are constant fine so because it's a multiple linear regression model right so we always have to interpret one coefficient saying that other independent variables are constant set as variables fine so this was the interpretation of beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 i'll repeat again so beta 1 is the average food expenditure of males when after tax income is zero fine beta 2 beta 2 means the average food expenditure of females is lower because this is minus is lower than average food expenditure of males by 228.968 dollars such that it is when after tax income is held constant fine let's come on to beta 3 when after tax income increases by one dollar the average food expenditure will increase by 0 0.0589 dollars set it as paribus fine so this is the interpretation of beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 the next part of the question says holding after tax income constant what is the difference between mean food expenditure of males and females we all know it is beta 2 the, uh, the differential intercept coefficient this is 228.9868 dollars the third question is is this difference statistically significant at 5 percent level of significance so now we need to check whether beta 2 is statistically significant or not so i perform the test h naught beta 2 equals to 0 alternative will be beta 2 less than 0 why less than 0 because it has a negative sign here the theory says that the uh, sign should be negative because maybe there's partiality you know with respect to females so average food expenditure of females is usually lower than that of males maybe because there's partiality in the system so there's a negative sign so i'll take alternative hypothesis as less than zero due to gender discrimination T observed is beta 2 hat upon standard error of beta 2 hat. Beta 2 hat in my model is 228.9868. This is the standard error. So you will come up with T observed as minus 2.13. T critical will come out to be T alpha 0.05 comma degrees of freedom. You had 22 individuals, 3 parameters. So N minus 3 becomes 20, 19. So T value will be minus 1.729. Since absolute value of T observed is greater than absolute value of T critical, I reject the null hypothesis and say H0 is rejected and hence the differential intercept coefficient beta 2 is actually statistically significant. The next part of the question is, what is the marginal propensity of food consumption holding gender difference constant? So the question says, what is the marginal propensity of food consumption holding the gender, uh, the gender difference constant? So gender difference is being accounted for by this dummy variable, di. So if I hold this constant, what is the marginal propensity to consume? Marginal propensity to consume is change in consumption due to change in income. That is given to me with beta 3. So beta 3 refers to the marginal propensity to consume. The next part is write down and draw the regression equations for males and females separately. So this is the regression equation altogether. Now the question says I have to make the regression equations for males and females separately and also draw them. So for females the regression equation would be the one when di is one. So if di is equal to 1, the regression equation for females would become 1506.244 minus 228.99 plus 0 0.0589xi. So di has taken a value of 1 now. However, for males, di will be 0. So that will be 1506.244 plus 0 0.0589xi. 
as is written over here so both of these will come out to be calculatedly this so y i had is equal to 1506.244 plus 0 0.0589 xi for males and 1277.2572 plus 0 0.0589 xi for females you notice the slope coefficient for both these regression equations is the same so if i am to draw the regression lines they will have a same slope which is positive only the intercept is varying intercept for males will be higher as compared to the females and this had to be because your differential intercept coefficient was negative that was showing that females average food consumption expenditure is actually lower which is also being reflected by this intercept so this is how it will come out to be after drawing this is the intercept for females this is intercept for males and this is a constant positive slope of 0 0.0589 so these are parallel regression lines with the same slope so that ends the topic on ncova models as well the analysis of covariance thank you